Hello, and welcome to the special edition of Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. A lot of the questions I hear online and I hear people talking about is, how do you select an airbrush? Now, I've been airbrushing a very long time, approximately 30 years. And uh, I've done some pretty nice projects, and I've got a lot of friends in the industry also. I'm going to go over some things with the airbrushes and the differences between them. And I'm not saying that other folks are wrong. I'm just letting you know my opinion and how I have come to these conclusions with selecting an airbrush. There are many different kinds, many different types, many brands, etc. So I'm hoping that when we're done here with this video, that maybe it will help you select something for your needs. Fantastic, all right. Well, let's move on. The first one we're gonna talk about here is what's called a single action airbrush. Now, for the beginner, this isn't too bad, but eventually you're gonna wind up wanting to upgrade. You push down the button for air and you release and it will stop spraying. If you want to adjust the amount of paint that comes out of this airbrush, you have to adjust this tip as you see me adjusting it here right now. Now this is called a siphon feed type airbrush. You have to attach the bottle at the base of the airbrush. Now one of the problems with this type of airbrush is that you have to mix up a lot of paint in order for the little tube in the bottom to spray out through the gun because it, it um, doesn't pick up the paint very well. Now again, you push the button to spray and you adjust it with that little needle tip in the, uh, in the bottom there. It comes with a hose, not a very good hose, but it, that's what you're paying for. You're paying for something on a budget, on a bargain. Attach the hose to the bottom of the brush. You attach the other end of the hose to this adapter, which will then hook up to either a, a quick disconnect or you'll, it'll hook up directly to the uh, tube on your compressor. It does come with a larger jar if you're spraying larger amounts of paint. It is made of glass, so you gotta be careful. And here's an adapter for aerosol cans. Now folks, listen to my opinion here, okay? Aerosol cans are very small and they're very, very expensive. The cans cost anywhere from $5 to $10 a piece, depending on where you get them, and they only last a few minutes. Avoid this at all costs. You don't want this, I promise you. It will get very, very expensive. The brush is cheap, but the cans are super expensive. Please try and stay away from this. Now here we're going to hook up the bottle, and we put a little bit of water in there just so you can see the stream. You adjust the nozzle, and that will adjust the amount of paint that it lets out of the airbrush gun. Here we go, you can see the mist right here. Now you can adjust it wide open, or you can adjust it to a fine mist. Now again, if you're just starting out and getting the idea of how to use an airbrush, then this isn't too bad. But eventually you're gonna want to get a better system. So my advice is to go with a double action airbrush. And again, these bottles, you've got to mix up so much paint in order to paint your car, you're going to have an awful lot of waste. Now, unless you're painting a whole bunch of cars, this really is not a good option, all right? The paints that you're using, the Spectre Flame paints, the Nitro Flame paints, um, any type of enamels or something like that, you're going to use a lot of paint. So my advice is to stay away from this type of airbrush. Now, on the other side, do they work? Yes, they do. Um, if you're just starting out and on a budget and trying to see if you want to do this, then maybe this is something for you. I personally, like I said, I would tell you to avoid this type of product. And there are no replacement parts. I got this at Harbor Freight. So this is what it is. Now the next brush we have here is a dual action airbrush. I also got this at Harbor Freight. Now this is definitely a step up. 
The thing is with this brush is that it comes with a bunch of attachments which are really cool. Now, push down for air and pull back for paint. That way you can regulate how much paint comes out of the brush. Now you don't have to adjust the tip with this, which is a good, a good deal. It's going to take a little bit of time to get used to how this sprays. Now, it does come with a bottle, but it also comes with a little siphon cup that you can attach and mix a small amount of paint. Comes with a really nice case, which is pretty cool. There's your spray mist. So you can definitely adjust that by pulling back farther to get a wider spray. This is definitely a step up from the single action airbrush. Now again, if you use the bottle, you're going to have to mix up a large amount of paint. This is why if you're going to have this type of brush, I would recommend that you use this siphon cup because you can mix a small amount of paint and it will work just fine. Now if you're just starting out, again, this is good. Now, here is my recommendation on this one. If you're going to buy a brush from Harbor Freight, buy the protection plan that goes with it. It's an extra $10, all right? The thing is with these airbrushes, again, from Harbor Freight, there are no replacement parts. You can't get replacement parts for these things. So once they break, they're done. Now the other thing with these brushes is inside the airbrush, there is a small nylon bearing that separates the air from the paint and doesn't allow the paint to go back behind where the needle is. Okay. The problem is with that little nylon bearing is that the paint thinner eats it away eventually. The paint thinner will eat away that nylon bearing. And once that bearing goes, your airbrush is trash. You might as well just throw it away. This is why I recommend if you get a brush like this, that you get the protection plan that goes along with it. You can return it and they will give you a new one without any questions. But of course you have to save the receipt or you have to give them your phone number, etc. If you buy this at Harbor Freight. These things are pretty easy to clean. You have to use pipe cleaners and um, lacquer thinner and stuff like that. Um, there's your, uh, your needle and your tip. You can get a pretty fine spray with these airbrushes. If you're just starting out, these are a good starting airbrush. Now, like I said, with these here, the problem with these airbrushes at Harbor Freight are there are no replacement parts for them. Once they go, they're gone. Now this airbrush cost approximately $20. That's not a lot if you're on a budget. Now you will have to buy a separate hose for this. You see that there in my hand. It doesn't come with the hose. You have to buy a separate hose. It's not a bad system. It works pretty good for what you're doing and it will take time to learn how to use it. If you're trying to find out if getting into airbrushing for your die cast hobby is for you, then this brush is decent. Again, down for air, back for paint. Not too bad and good for the budget. Now we have something here a little bit more expensive. This is a Pache Talon airbrush. This is what I use, but I do a lot of painting also, and I've painted, like I said, for a bunch of years. This is one of the top of the line airbrushes. You can get this for approximately anywhere from $90 to $150, whether you buy just the airbrush or the set. This is called a gravity feed airbrush because the paint is coming from the top. Now you can mix as much paint or as little paint as you want with this and just pour it into the cup on the top. This brush works excellent. And you can also get replacement parts for this item, which is really cool. You can get a lot of fine detail with this and I recommend this brush highly. Again, you push down for air and pull back for paint. This is that dual action or double action system double action airbrush. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of water in there just so you can see. 
and you pull it back and there's your spray. The farther you pull back, the more paint you get. Now this particular brush here comes with a whole bunch of options with it. This is a really, really nice system. Now there are ones that are cheaper, Pache airbrushes, and I'll show you some of those in just a few moments. But um, you've also got a more expensive brand called Iwata. Now your Iwata airbrushes are fantastic. They are kind of like the Cadillac. Now I like them, they're very good paint brushes, but I don't want to pay that much money for them myself. Now this Pache Talon comes with an attachment to where you can almost use it as a large wide sprayer for like if you were painting a large surface. It also comes with a little holder that you can attach to the wall or attach to your table and you can hold your airbrush. It also comes with two different sets of needles and spray tips. Now notice here this one says TA3 or tip number three. This one here says tip number one. They come in three different sizes, one, three, and five. The larger the number, the wider the spray will be. So one is a very fine spray, number three is a little bit wider, and number five is even wider than that. And it also comes with the needles that you would use for those particular tips, and they're labeled appropriately. All you have to do is check out the manual that comes inside the box. I recommend this airbrush highly. Again, if you're going to be painting custom cars and, and die cast and like this, you're going to want to get a decent brush. If you just do it occasionally just to have some fun, then I would go with the cheaper versions that are out there, like the Harbor Freight brush, or in a moment here, hey, there it is, the Pache VL. I've used these brushes for years and they're definitely a workhorse. They also come with the different sizes of needles and here's some different variations of the brush. Now I like the Pache VL and we're gonna go into the box here and see what's inside. Alright let's open it up and show you what's inside. Here you've got your brush. This is a dual action brush. Now you can pick these up for approximately $65 to $75. But the parts that you get for these, or the replacement parts, if you need them, are extremely cheap and they're readily available. You can get them on Amazon. You can go to the Pache website. And there's a lot of art stores that also carry this type of brush. Push down for air and back for paint. Dual action system comes with a little siphon siphon cup here now again this is a, uh, uh, a siphon feed type system comes with a little holder like I was showing you before attach it to your table or your workbench hang your brush in there when you're done pretty cool see me futzing with that thing comes with the hose which is really good Here's the different tips and um, extra tips that it comes with. It comes with a one, three, and a five. The number three is installed, but it comes with a number one needle and a number five needle. <laughs> you can see the five needle on the right. You see how big it is. It also comes with the tips for the one and the five. This one here is the five, the T5, as you see. And this one here is the T1. That's for very, very fine spray. Pretty nice system. Very reasonably priced. I recommend this one highly. Comes with your wrench. The wrench you can use to take off and tighten up your tips. Now notice a little hole in the top of the bottle here. You need to keep that little hole free so the air can flow. If it's, that little hole is blocked, it will build up so much pressure in your brush. And if you accidentally pull out the needle on your brush, it will spray a stream of paint across the room. The book is really cool. Shows you a lot of uh, tips and tricks in there on how to get used to your airbrush. 
This is a really good brush for beginners, folks. I had a system when I was airbrushing t-shirts that had 20 of these airbrushes all hooked up and each one of them had a different color, which allowed me to go through colors really quick to paint t-shirts because when you're painting t-shirts down on the beach and stuff like that, you need that system to change quickly and you don't waste paint flushing it out. This little holder here that I have that you can get also on Amazon, you can spray into the holder if you're trying to clean out your airbrush. The little holes in the top there, there is a filter on the inside that you can replace when it gets full and it will allow you to spray any cleaning fluid or any excess paint or something inside of that jar. Plus it works out as a good holder. This is actually pretty darn cool. Good stuff. I love this brush. I'll keep buying them. I'll keep using them. And they're half the price of the Iwata airbrushes. Would I like to have those Iwatas? You're darn right I would. But you know what? Hey, who hates to spend money when you really don't need to? Good stuff. Here's the kit that it comes in. It comes with your brush. It comes with the extra tips and needles. It comes with a little holder and the wrench. And it also comes with your hose. Recommend this system highly. Here is a cutaway of the Pache Talon airbrush. Now the reason I'm showing you this is inside the airbrush there is a Teflon bushing. Now the Harbor Freight airbrush has a nylon bushing and the paint thinners that you use to clean the airbrushes will eventually deteriorate the bushing on the inside. The higher end airbrushes like your your Pache airbrushes, your Iwata airbrushes, they come with a Teflon bushing. And the best part about these brushes here, these higher end brushes, is there are parts available if things wear out. So this is why I recommend, if you're going to get an airbrush and you know you're gonna be doing it for a while, go ahead and spend the few extra dollars and get you one of the better airbrushes. Over time, it will save you money and they'll last longer. And again, this is another reason why I say if you buy the Harbor Freight airbrushes that you should get the replacement plan in case they wear out. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and also hit that little bell so you can be alerted to any future videos that I post. I hope that this video has answered your questions on airbrushes. Now please don't hesitate to contact me through the comment section if you have any questions on airbrushes or selection of airbrushes, etc. I will be more than happy to answer them for you. I wanted to show you this. This is a airbrush magazine from Europe. Now this is a few years back, but uh, this was a yearbook that came out in Germany and I was actually featured inside the magazine and showing folks how to paint. Um, that's, that's me when I was younger for sure, but it went in step by step and showed us, showed you how I painted this t-shirt of a NASCAR racer by the name of Alan Kowicki. This was after he passed away. But uh, I was very honored to be able to uh, have a feature in this magazine and uh, it was really cool. And I just wanted to share that with you, just to show you that yes, I have been airbrushing for quite a long time. This again, folks, is my opinion on airbrushes. And I hope that I can help guide you in selecting an airbrush that suits your needs. Thank you again for joining me here today. My name is Paul at Diecast Graveyard. Now, coming up very soon will also be another video on how to select a compressor. Now, this is going to be an important video that will also tie into this airbrush video. Um, I've got a lot of opinions on that, too, and I'm really hoping that that video will also help guide you into your selection of your compressor. Check out the folks at SprayGunner.com. They've got a complete line of airbrushes for all your airbrush needs. 
They've got a really cool line of compressors to include their wonderful no-name compressors. They've got airbrush paints from Createx, which is an incredibly great brand. They've got their in-house brand called Chroma Air. I love these paints. Airbrush kits from Grex and No Name and many other manufacturers. Spend less, get more at SprayGunner.com. I want to thank you for joining me on Diecast Graveyard today. Please don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button. It really helps me out. Now, if you have any questions on today's video or anything else, please put it in the comments because I read every single comment. Thanks again. Have a great day and cheers.